All right, for segment one today, we're going to give you an introduction of Absolute Power. This is, uh, for those of you who saw our series on Big Eye, Small Mouth, this is similar to that. It uses the TriStat system. Uh, you do character creation very similarly, which always confuses me because, you know, it just does. <laughs> I'm not a point guy when it comes to this, so I'll be begging Heathen Dog for some help here. Uh, we'll see. Well, that'll be in the second video. But we're, we're going to lean into what is Absolute Power. We're going to find out it's the second edition of Silver Age Sentinels. What does that mean? I'm not going to read everything. He's got a whole huge chapter on history of comic books and so forth in here. We'll page through quickly. I am not reading all that. Uh, we're going to get into what the meat of this is in this first video. So, of course, please, uh, how about this, like, subscribe, and share. If you want more absolute power, you're going to get it anyway. So maybe there's a bad threat. <laughs> and let's present yeah, a little bit. page. Not that one. Where is it? Why is everything out of order? There we go. There's our cover. By the way, for folks... One of the things that I'm going to say about um, the Discami stuff, uh, it suffers one of the same issues that every company, including Palladium, that I get stuff from has, where it's like when you get the special edition of the book, they really are collector's editions. You can't use them. They're the ones where it's like the binding isn't perfect. Uh, the silver etching starts to flap off. You know, the, it's got it's this one's got like a for me, it's got a wraparound paper book cover. So if like more than three hands get on it, it gets all, you know, wrinkly and so forth. But their main books are really good quality. Uh, just as an example, here's a little small TriStat core book. It is as cheap as you can get. They went palladium on this one, black and white. And it's meant to be that way to get you into the system. So... But when they do quality, I, that die roller, you guys hear me clicking in Bears game or that I sometimes do when Heathen Dog says, hey, roll some dice. Uh, that's the Discami die roller that came with either the Absolute Power or Bessem. It's, it's cardboard, but it's like cardboard wrapped in cement. <laughs> like it is really good quality. And one of the add-ons for Kickstarter for Absolute Power was a box of cards. And I was waiting to get a 52 deck of cards. No, I got this monstrosity. and. These are all player characters for absolute power. So Discami does a good job of uh, putting quality into their stuff. Just don't get the collector's edition stuff, because just like Free League, man, you get the collector's edition, you're going to be like, I really wish I had the regular main book so I could use it. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to put that out there. And we might look over those cards at some point when it comes to characters, but we'll figure that out later. So I have a bunch of little notes here on what we're specifically going to cover um, so Silver Age has come and gone. Superpowers now bring fear as often as comfort. All right. So what does that mean? Just without even finishing that sentence, you are playing a superhero game, but it's more of a gray area one. If you're one of those superhero purists where everybody always has to be a good guy in forever, well, guess what? You can do that here. But the world itself is, I mean, it's called absolute power for a reason. And I don't know if we're really going to dive into a lot of that aspect of it. That'd be more for you. It's more for the second book that we're not covering. But it's about what happens when you have absolute power. And I'm going to give you an example that's not even related to this game. Heathen Dog ran a mage game many moons ago. And uh, he, I was like, ah, I don't know, man. I didn't really like vampires, so on and so forth. And he convinced me to play it. And he said, well, what would you do if you had the power of a mage and could affect the real world. Just think of it like that. I said, okay. And we played and we played and we played and we played. And somehow my character at the end, he might remember my character is always preaching like, come on guys, we got to be good. We got to do this. Dirk, why are you so dark? What happened right at the end when you basically gave me ultimate power? Oh, you, you completely changed completely changed the 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 young idealistic man who started the game was not the same man that that got hit by an asteroid I'm telling you not the yeah, same dude the, the the first thing that i what, did was to, i took to tell Hunts. them exactly the thought process behind your your change I, I, yeah, that, that's an easy one for me. So the first thing I did is I locked Garthon in some monolith, like his character, just Dirk, his character's name is Dirk. I said, you know what? 
locking you in this monolith. You are too dark. You have gone down the deep end. So my character was like, I'm doing good here. And I mean good, not well. I'm doing good. I've, this guy has gone dark. I can finally contain him. He's too powerful. He's the things that he wants to do is like, it's just wrong. But I didn't, it's like <laughs> no agency, no, no discussion, no, whatever locking you in a monolith. And I, I forget the other stuff I did, but I took my ultimate power and I reshaped the world into my vision in literally one session. <laughs> so this game yep, he, is similar. He, he Thanos the entire fucking joint. <laughs> did I kill anybody? I don't think I killed anybody. But yeah, well, but, you but, had but, to. You had to kill people because there are some people in your world, worldview that do not belong. Oh, that's right. Because that's right. Because when I shaped it into my worldview, I basically did that. I never put that together before. Yeah. That's what happens when you're evil. <laughs> I only wanted the good people to remain. Um, but the, the yeah, I mean, the, 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 the best villain ever believes they're doing the right thing. They believe that everything they're doing is justified. Mm -hmm. Dr. Doom and, and Thanos are two examples that, that people would know. They believed that they were doing the right thing. They're, the, the evil that they did was more than justified by the good that came as a result. And they were blind. They couldn't see how other people actually saw them now. Right. Real quickly, for the is. folks who watch this later on video, there is a huge delay choppiness issue uh, we think is coming from Heathen Dog's end um, or StreamYard or whatever. But uh, so if there's dead space or if I talk over him or if he talks over me, that's why I I'm trying to mitigate it. But <laughs> hopefully this gets fixed because it's getting worse every week. And it seems like it's a StreamYard problem because we don't have this problem anywhere else, literally anywhere else. Discord, uh, you know zoom teams whatever just anything that we do it's only happening when we're on Streamyard. so now with that said uh let's yeah. go back to the sentence here superpowers now being feared as often as comfort and shades of gray oh i love the canadian way of spelling gray uh cast the world in shadow muting the shining colors of <laughs> yesteryear i'm not going to do that throughout the entire thing i want to but i won't do that through the entire thing uh villains have become stronger and their influence is felt in every nation the need for heroes is greater than ever can you balance superhuman gifts with humility i know somebody who can't compassion and hope do you have what it takes to resist the ever-present lure of absolute power now thematically you could put that in literally any game you ever run but i like the fact that it's addressed here i just do so uh what's the next thing we're going to look at oh yeah we're going to look at his manifesto we'll put the names up there for a moment there all right da -da -da -da. lots of you there's gonna be a lot of stuff we skip in this first one uh, this is the introduction. Now, I like this manifesto. The reason why I like it is, uh, I don't agree with every word of it, is because it, it, but it does tell you a lot of things that I think are just true for most role-playing games, if not every role-playing game. So let's start at the top here. Follow the rules or don't. I'm a game manifesto, not a cop. Well, I don't like the way that's written, <laughs> I get it. It's like, if something's not working for you, change it we've all house ruled games forever i am a strict believer though in you always play by the rules first and you don't change things until you've actually seen it in action not work uh always strive towards maximizing inclusion diversity and sensitivity whatever uh <laughs> diversity okay i i hate to i'm go not i i'm not striving yeah, I'm I, I I'm not going to go out of my way to include all types of people on my table. Most people have trouble filling a table with anyone, let alone a diverse group of 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 of, uh, of some so so many colors. You think you have a rainbow around you? So I don't I don't know what world you live in, man. It, Kanadistan's weird, but all right. Well, whatever. Uh, so the thing is, is uh. I, and I don't know. I think I know what is meant. His meaning is here. I mean, they're, let's be honest. They're buzzwords that are that are used, um, especially at the time that the book was written. Uh, 
the thing is, is like it was taught to me, inclusion and diversity are wholly different things. Diversity are just check boxes. Inclusion is letting people play. What is our third core value? Natu- natural, organic inclusion, not forced diversity. And the reason we have that is we, yeah, if somebody wants to play at your table and sit, sit at your table and play in your game and is not disruptive to the table, let them. Who cares about religion, politics, gender ideology, whatever? As long as they're not a disruption at the table, let these people come in and play. But I'm not going to go out of my way, which has literally been in forum posts, Twitter tweets, Twitter tweets. Yeah, you heard it. Uh, and, and whatnot, where it's like, if half your table, this came from EN World, I'll just say it. This came from EN World a couple years ago. If at least half your table isn't person of color or LGBTQ, you need to find a new table. No, you know, that's that's nonsense. Play with the people who want to play with you regardless, as long as they're not disruptive at, at your table. And yes, conservatives can be disruptive. Liberals can be disruptive. Uh, you can't be playing wrong. This is a Kevin Simbita quote because <laughs> I kind of disagree with it. Uh, you can't be playing wrong when creating an enjoyment for the entire group. You know, I, I hate that cop out answer. As long as you're having fun, Ugh. um, because I do, I do think that there is a right way to play games. No. Wait, no to me or no to them? What me? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a. Oh, okay. You're just so delayed, with man. You and I am sad about that. No. Uh, with that said, yeah, if you had fun, I mean, I think it's a cop out answer to me because you, you, of course, that you're there to play a game and have fun. I get that. Uh, now, do I think, by the way, I've poo pooed two lines here already. Does this mean I think this is horrible? No, I actually think this manifesto is good because it says things that somebody new to the hobby probably needs to you know, understand. Uh, this fourth one, though, this is the the worst line in this entire manifesto. Should dice rolls conflict with great story development, the story always wins. False. 100% unequivocally. Oh, see, even, even I don't railroad that bad. Dice create the story. The result of the dice are what actually create. It's called emergent storytelling. Uh, so I can't get with this one at all. But again, the type of game that he's going for is yeah, an I mean, that, a more that one sentence game. tells me that that the creator thinks light novels are fun. Well, I mean, it's funny you say that because right here is a light novel. Absolute power. So I have not read it yet, though. OK, yeah, I don't, I don't want to role play it. It's fair. Um. Let's see. Da, 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 where is it? Moving beyond the rules of creativity and innovation is encouraged. Yes. I mean, everybody house rules that no game can cover literally everything you can come up with at a table, especially a superhero game. Your interpretation of the game rules is as official as designer's intent. I, yeah, <laughs> that goes back to house ruling. It's a tough one for me because I, I think spirit of the law trumps the letter of the law and designer's intent is important, but I get it. Uh, role-playing but, intensity. Cre- oops, sorry. Uh, saying, it, saying it's official is not, not a good... Saying it's official is not a good plan. Role-playing intensity increases with honest and respectful communication. Yeah, don't be a dick at the table. Trust is an essential ingredient for an amazing game experience. This is why you don't fudge your roles. This is why you, uh, what, what do I call, what do I call the term in my game? Clear? No, 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 that's technical writing. Uh, uh, fair, reasonable, and consistent. You need to be fair, reasonable, consistent. Make a fair ruling. You need to make a reasonable ruling and make sure it's consistent. So if you do it to a player, you do it to another player. If you do it to an NPC, you do it to the players, you do it to the players, you do it to NPCs. Good, bad, and otherwise. The game master works against the characters, but never against the players. That is true. You are this should not be adversarial. Game masters should be happy when player characters achieve something they didn't think possible. Just put another challenge in front of them next time. You got me now. If you are no longer having fun playing the game, stop, regroup, and evaluate. I think that that line didn't need to be need. It isn't needed, but it, you know what? It is needed. <laughs> you know, it, it's a game. Have fun. This goes back to a lot of the free league comments where I say I understand why it's there, though I don't think it's needed. I understand why it's there. Don't think it's needed, but yeah. Uh, hey, if you're not having fun, talk about it. The game book contains the answers to all things, and when the above does not apply, make it up. And I think that's true for every 
game out there. So why do I read this? The reason I read this is because in our circles, which are admittedly conservative right wing, generally speaking, OSR, white grognards, um, they see things from uh, Mark's books and they start harping on politics. And I read this because I want to remind you that I'm a game manifesto, not a cop. If you don't like something in here, because we are going to come across they, them characters in this book. If you don't like it, just give the person a sex. Okay, Mark, we've talked with Mark. He wants you to play. He, Mark and Kevin are very similar in this one. Sometimes it's hard to get a straight answer for them. What should I do in this case? Because they both give the same answer. What works for your table? That's the that's the point of, of a lot of this. So, um, a couple of my way more right wing than me even own. Well, actually, they own Bessem. They don't own uh, Absolute Power, and they love the game. So you can you can too. All right, uh, let's move on. We're going to move on to page eighteen. Oh no, page seven. So. I, by the way, I generally like the layout of the book. does a really good job in the layout. I like his introduction headers here. Uh, again, it has a very superhero-y feel to it. So we want to go to page 7. Is that page 7? That's page 7, and Absolute Power does not. Here we go. And we've already kind of noted this, but I'm going to say it again. Absolute Power does not take a strong take as strong a position as its predecessor. So if you're familiar with Silver Age Sentinels... This game might be a little more gray area than you used to. So let's say that again. Absolute power does not take as strong a position as its predecessor on what heroism looks like. Empire City has returned with a greater focus on moral ambiguity and relativism. But our efforts are not intended to disparage the idea of heroics. We did not choose this title to glorify raw might or some concept of necessary corruption. Absolute power is a warning against the desire to reach for that little bit more power to keep up with those opposed to society's greater good. All that's needed is a little more something. So uh, I'm not going to read all this, but it gives you an idea what the game's about. If you want to play a purely superheroic game, do it. If you want to play a really dark game, go for it. It's all built in here. And then we've got a long history of comics. What's the next page I need to go to? 18. Look at all this. Do, 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 do. Long history of comics, which actually, for somebody like me who's not a comic book guy, if I were to play the game, I think this would be helpful to understand, okay, what's the point of Silver Age? What does it mean? All right, uh, page 16. And page 18. Page 18, RP versus G. Where is that? What is a role-playing game? RP versus G. And I can't remember if I wanted to read this because I really agreed with it or I really disagreed with it, but we we're going to find out. People, people play role-playing games for many reasons, and different game systems cater to some preferences more than others. That is true. There are definitely story games out there, and there are definitely crunchy games out there, and there are all things in between. RPGs that have, have detailed and intricate game systems typically attract players who are engaged with the system mechanics and focus more on the game parts of an RPG. Conversely, games that have more flexible and narrative game systems typically attract players that engage with the story plots and focus more on the role-playing parts of an RPG. I generally agree with them. And there's nothing wrong with generalization. You can be like, well, I'm the exception to that. Sure. I think Mark's right in this one. I think he is. And and to be honest, if you compare TriStat versus Champions, a lot of similarities in character creation, but game mechanics wise, they couldn't be more night and day different. TriStat, no matter what this book might look like to you and how thick it is, it's just a lot of character features in here. When we get to the, uh, the, the game rule section, you're going to see that it's basically two pages. It's really more, but it, it, essentially you can boil it down to two pages. It's meant to be that simple so you can get to the game and start playing. So uh, do I want to read the next paragraph? I forget. Uh, yep, I do. Absolute power falls in between on the spectrum, leaning more towards emphasizing the stories and characters as opposed to the game system. Well, that explains some of the stuff from the manifesto now, doesn't it? Although the underlying TriStat system game engine is streamlined and easy to use, it is quite comprehensive and robust system designed to handle nearly anything you throw at it. I would say this is true. Excuse me. I would say that's true. 
The process of creating characters in Absolute Power can be quite an involved process given the volume of options available. But once the adventure begins, the game mechanics fade into the background and allow the role play to command the stage. Hmm, what game system does that sound like? I would say it's very similar to Palladium. It takes forever to make the character, but once you have it done, it's, it's all right there in the character sheet. Oh, where am I? Uh, since Absolute Power and Discami Publishing's multi-genre anime RPG, Big Eye Small Mouth, also known as Bessem 4th Edition, use the same game mechanic framework, the two games are fully compatible and easy to integrate if desired. I hope I don't say this backward, maybe Heathen Dog remembers, but the last time Mark McKinnon was on, I think he said that Bessem... This seems backward to me because I, I think of anime as more powerful than superheroes, but I think he said that Bessem is like... Power levels one through six, where absolute power is power levels one through ten. I might have that backward though. So one of the games definitely goes into a higher power construct. All right, uh, moving on. By the way, I'm pausing here just in case Heathen Dog starts talking. <laughs> There's a delay. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, let's see, page 2223. All right, now we're going to uh, actually start reading a bit. Oh, is this 22 and 23? That's 22. Oh, so right here. All right, so we're going to talk about character creation in the next video, but we've got to get some things down here. So we are going to read this page. Literally says it right there. To provide context for what comes next, we create an absolute power character below. From start to finish, as outlined in chapters 2 through 7. We are not going through 2 through 7 today. This will be over the course of multiple weeks. As you progress through the book, you'll gain detailed understanding of the character choices presented in this extended example. So, session zero, we're going to skip this, you know, session zero, that's just where you describe what kind of power level you're going to do in your game, the rules for your table, you know, the, the personal, you know, the social contracts type stuff. But the important part of it is how many points is my character? Is it 500 points where I have every power in the universe and I basically am Thanos and could do that? Or am I... Uh, was I think 50 points or 75 points as a normal person and you're just Joe Schmo walking down the street hoping to enjoy your day? It's like the boys, right? I mean, those characters are just a whole mix of power of power levels. I mean, you have to drink a serum just to get any sort of power, right? But a lot of the characters in there are just normal, mundane folks. So templates. All right, trans starts creating Crash Punk by selecting a power template. Again, we'll get into that in the next video. He settles on the first degree acrobat for 20 points. The abilities like Attack and Defense Mastery, Lightning Reflexes, Jumping, Mulligan, and Adventuring Skill Group fit how Tran sees Vin's development since moving to Empire City. Tran adds to Vin's background an interest in mixed martial arts and gymnastics while he wasn't performing with VTP, which helps explain some of the attributes included in the Acrobat template. Uh, now I kind of feel... So he was in a boy band, okay? VTP was a boy, boy band. <laughs> Okay. Uh, assigning the warden origin template makes sense as well. So well, hold on here. We have uh, where is it? Power template, right? And the warden origin template. So now we've got two templates that are being applied to the character. Templates. Uh, how many points did they say it was going to be? Uh, I think it was two hundred. Oh, 100 characters will be created from hundred. So, yeah, okay, so it looks like 100 character points total. So this template cost him 20 points, and this other template cost him apparently 30 points. Yeah, 30 points. So he's used half his points right now. Just, you know, and again, we'll look at templates in the next video. So assigning the Warden Origin template makes sense as well, since the GM recommended that everyone in the group selected to reflect their uh, contracted status. So, uh-oh, loss of agency. The Game Master said, do something with your character. Okay. You know, if the Game Master says, this is going to be the type of campaign that I'm running, I don't have a problem with that. This template provides some additional combat abilities and also gives Crash Punk access to the Warden tech items and gear. Being a Warden costs another 30 points, so Tran has assigned 50 of the 100 points with just two templates. But he has 50 points uh, to uh, remain to be allocated. All right. Uh, what is 
the channel that was mentioned earlier for the five bucks? Uh, it's Avenger Satanus. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I can't remember his uh, blog. But it's like Avenger Satanus old school blog or something is his website, and uh, he you can find him on Twitter. I think is Avenger Satanus. I, I can give all that uh, that later. Uh, duh, 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 duh. so after signing the Acrobat and Warden templates, Crash Punk already has a plus four to his body stat, plus three from one template, plus one from another template, and plus three to his mind stat. And again, we'll get into all this earlier. This is a primer for what we're going to get into. And plus two to a soul stat. There are only three stats in the tri stat system. Weird. It's called tri stat, and there are three of them. Funny uh, how that works. <laughs> right, Trancy's Crash has a very physical character with training in Empire City. He would likely have become one of the most capable humans in a large region. This aligns with the body stat of 10, which requires a further assignment of six ranks added to his plus four base. So we'll see how these points. I, I do like the fact that Mark put how many points it was in here, even though we haven't talked about them yet, because you can see how they're uh, they're. Um, how they're going up. And right here, six ranks is 12 more points. So if uh, he was at, was a plus four? So plus six here makes the 10 that he wanted. And that's going to cost him 12 more points on top of the 50 they spent. So he spent 62 points so far. And if this is all confusing, don't worry about it. We will look at templates and we're going to go through every one of these chapters in the coming weeks. You will have it. You will understand it. Champions players are rolling their eyes going, yeah, we get it. Everybody else is like, wait, what? <laughs> so, uh, Tran wants Crash's intellectual and spiritual aspects, mind and soul stats to be the same. Highly capable, but not particularly noteworthy in a world of superheroes. So this is going to be better than the normal Joe Schmo, but, you know, compared to other superheroes, eh, you know, they work, but. Uh, this aligns with stat values of seven, which requires an additional four ranks in mind, which cost eight points and five ranks in soul. So if you notice each one of the stats for every point you, uh, you increase it, it costs two of your character points. So body 10, mind seven and soul seven thus require the allocation of 30 more points of the 50 remaining when you tap total all together, leaving 20 points left to assign. Start with 100, use 50 point across two templates, spent 30 points here in the attributes. You have 20 left to do or to spend attributes okay <laughs> this is how we met mr mark mckinnon <laughs> when we were covering Bessem, we got annoyed by the term attributes because when we think attributes we think the core prime stats i hate to say this and it, this right. is this is actually embarrassing because in all the years i played dungeons and dragons i never called them ability scores i called them attributes and I think it's because I started with Palladium. Well, really, in, in terms of focusing on games, started with Palladium. And so I was used to calling them attributes. So, so Heathen Dog and I were like, ah, the attributes and stats this is all confusing. What the hell? Why can't you call it? Everybody else calls it. Mark comes on and says, yeah, you know, in D&D, they're called the Billy scores, right? Wait, what? <laughs> so I can't. Stop being smart ass. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I can't quibble over his use of the word attributes here, but get, but understand that attributes in the the sense of uh, absolute power, attributes are the, the intangibles, uh, the configured stats. They're the things you choose. They're everything outside of the core tri stat. I mean, it's not called tri attribute system, right? It's called tri stat. Yeah, I can't argue with him on that. Even though he broke, he shattered my worldview. You know. <laughs> So, uh, so reading through chapter five, Tran identifies several attributes that make sense for Crash Punk and would round out his crime fighting abilities. He already has a solid fighting base and access to Warden Cliff resources. Again, that's all part of the templates. But Tran thinks he needs a few aspects that are uniquely his. All right, cool. First, Vin is quite fluent in English. Well, I mean, that's a that's a Vietnamese name, right? So. Uh, mm -hmm. Great, but his native tongue. Oh, yeah, but his native tongue is Vietnamese. If I would have just kept reading, he's also studied Spanish extensively. He has relatives in Spain, so Vin needs uh, features at ah, level one. Spain Spanish, yeah, the real Spanish, not the other crap. Okay, I'm not going to say the term that uh, that my Hispanic friends say that uh, Spain Spanish sounds like. <laughs> uh, so Vin needs features at level one, which is one point for two extra languages since level one uh since level one provides one or two features if this is confusing i promise you we're going to get to this later this is just part of the nature of being a quick template or a quick uh, understanding of what's going on you're going to see terms and concepts 
that might not make sense at this moment. Come back to this video after we go through those things and you can see how all this is done. Uh, for the Palladium fans out there that we have, this is very similar to Palladium. Not in, No, this is a point-based system, skill-based system, not a, a class-based, but in the fact that you have so much consideration up front with your character, but once it's on the character sheet, man, you're good to go. It's it's like uh, it had in chat. It's very much like uh, like champions or hero system, yeah. Yeah, where you do, yeah. a lot of the time is spent during character generation, but after that, most of the math is gone. Right, right. I would say that tri stat is easier than hero system in terms of gameplay, but I like them both. I, I've played champions way more than I've played uh, 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 well, Bessem, but. Uh, I, I like I like the tri stat system. I also like the champion system. Like I don't have quibbles like that. So, but for people who want something a little more, uh, not easy. Uh, what's the word I want to use? A little more consistent. Uh, rules light is not a term I'd use either. Easier, but we'll go with it just to put it in your brain. That just something you can jump into a bit quicker. I would say is this. It's just it's it's simpler. It's more it's more streamlined. That doesn't make champions bad to me. All right. The primary metahuman ability that manifested during Vin's car crash is a moderately powerful force field. Well, I guess you know how he survived now. That he can project over yep. the nearby area to protect both himself and nearby allies. Allies. Wow. Allies, not allies. Or bystanders. Tran hasn't yet determined the reason, but he sees the force energy as a barrier for incorporeal spirits. And what? He sees the... He sees the force energy as a barrier for incorporeal spirits and begins as well. And beings, come on. That please still Lord, didn't teach me make literacy. Sense to me. I don't know. That one still didn't make sense to me. Let, let me try and uh, get it out. Yeah, I feel Tran like it should hasn't say hasn't yet determined the reason, but he sees the force energy as a barrier for incorporeal spirits and beings as well i feel like that word should okay. be of not so for guessing uh, yeah he, he might not understand uh, the power i'm okay with i'm okay with him not understanding the power I, i'm hung up on this word like i said i really feel like this word should be of this might be a typo but i'm not gonna if it said of i'm i'm in we're good okay it would make sense yeah it would make sense yeah, he's he's got spirits looking out for him. That that makes a lot yeah. more sense than whatever this sentence is trying to shovel into me. <laughs> right. Tran settles on a level four force field, which is 16 points. So what does that mean? It's probably four points per level, but we'll get into that later. That functions at level two, armor rating 20, due to two enhancements. Now, this is something we are going to talk about later, enhancements and limiters. This was a very confusing part for me. And I always have to slow down when I talk about it because I understand it when I'm when I talk about it slowly. It always confuses me when I first look at it. It acts as level two, even though it's level four, because he has two enhancements. Effectively, in this case, each enhancement drops it down a level. So effectively, it gives it more wide ability, but less deep ability. That's how I visualize yeah. it in my head. If that's wrong, well, that's the only way, because it's other than that, for me, it's hard to explain, wait a minute, why is it level four, but only acts at level two? Because he decided to go wider with it by two levels instead of, you know, as deep. So Tran likes the idea of Crash Punk having a minor edge on all dice rolls relating to his body stat. Edge is similar to advantage, disadvantage. Well, I guess in this case, it'd be advantage uh, in uh, in D&D. And assigns expertise at level three. We'll look at those later. Finally, Crash Punk's experience with the underworld and urban elements of Empire City has honed his talents and intuition, which aligns with the street skills group at level two. Yeah, skill groups blew my mind too. That's something I struggled with as well. I think I get them now, but uh, you pay points for your skills and they, they, yeah, get to that when we get to that. Uh, these extra attributes add up to a cost of 24 character points on top of the 80 Previously allocated for a total of, uh-oh, uh-oh, 104. Tran has overspent by four points. So there's a couple things you can do. You can say, sorry, pal, you need to drop that down. Or you can pick defects for people who played, you know, the old World of Darkness. This is like flaws and, uh, oh, my God, yeah, flaws. What were the powers called? Merits? 
in in World of Darkness. Yes, Merits of Flaw. Yeah. So this would be like the flaws uh, portion of that. Partially, Trans knows. Trans knows. Wow. Trans knows that he can balance those four missing points by assigning a few more defects to his creation. Crash Punk already has a one rank obligated defect in his template that reflects reflects his contract with Wardenclyffe. To that, Tran adds a one rank physical impairment defect for three points. Wow. To represent Vin's amnesia from the it's always amnesia from the car crash a year earlier. But there's an awesome Futurama episode on that. I'm, when I grew up, I have so much amnesia. Uh, since Crash Punk is still well known and quite recognizable as the retired leader of the Vietnamese boy band sensation Voto, Votu Punks, Tran also signs one rank of the hounded defect. This is people who run after you like groupies. <laughs> oh my god I that's pretty funny autograph. yeah he's got groupies around him oh, i want your autograph for what <laughs> the hell are you people on about <laughs> right uh see with sufficient defects assigned to make up uh for the four overspent points crash punk is now a complete 100 point character it's only one final okay, step now to go. i i sense a problem going forward and okay. I, like i said i sense it i don't know it but these defects, for the small amount of points that, that you get refunded to you, they seem to do a lot. Well, when we get to them, if you remember, and this will be in a couple of weeks. Actually, this will be in like three or four weeks. Oh, wow. Re okay. Remember these, because I'm not going to cover literally every single one in the book. We're going to pick one or two or a handful of them to take a look at. Some normal powers, some weird powers, some skill groups so we can understand them. But if you want to remember what Hounded Defect is, go ahead and jot that down. And it's definitely one we can take a look at. Like, how bad is that? You know, Is it just something that, like, once per session the Game Master rolls? Or is it something that every time he tries to sneak, like, go incognito somewhere, he has to deal with it? I, I don't know. Yeah, Amnesia's three points out of 100? That seems a little excessive. Like, I didn't get enough points back for full-on amnesia. Yeah, may maybe it just means, again, we'll look at it when we go into the defects. That possibly could mean there's, maybe he only f doesn't know about the stuff about the crash. He might remember he's in a boy band, but he doesn't remember what just specifically led up to the crash. So he doesn't know that some supervillain actually picked up his car and threw it against a wall. It could be that simple. I, I don't know. Or it could be he's missing ages 9 through whatever age he is, 20 or 18 or whatever. Oh, it's a boy band. 25, I don't know. How, when do you age out of a boy band? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't tell you. Uh, Crash Punk stats are now set. Body of 10, mind 7, soul 7. So Tran calculates his character's derived values. Combat value is the average of the three stats, which equals 8s. This value is used as the base for both attack combat value and defense combat value. Understand that Mark McKinnon is a Canadian. He is going to write things in the Canadian way. I saw a comment up there that I kind of responding to as well uh, by stating that. So, yes, this is all written in Kanadistanian. Uh, this value is used, uh, so, no, we won't get that, we'll get in that in the rule. So, with level 3 in both attack mastery and defense mastery, Vin has well-balanced offensive and defensive techniques that are each modified to values of 11. So base eight plus the three because the expertise or mastery, sorry, he gets an 11. Health points equals five times the sum of body and soul stats. So what do we have here? Body 10, soul 7. So that's 17. 17 times 5, uh, 85? So, uh, Sum of body and soul set, which calculates to 85. You know, I should just read. Vin's level 1 tough attribute adds plus 10 to this base, giving a final health point total of 95. And free freak out, like, oh my god, you can never kill these characters. <laughs> Remember, they're superheroes. 95 That's points of lot. damage would be a lot, but uh, it can happen. Energy point calculation is unmodified by attributes. Five times the sum of mind and soul stat equals 70. Finally, Crash Punk has a damage multiplier of 5. This value is the same for all unmodified absolute power characters. So there you go. So we'll just say, for the sake of argument, you do 3 points of damage. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. You actually did 15 points of damage. So, And this is what a character looks like when done. Uh, I will just pick... Oh, I put them in upside down. Go figure. 
I will just pick this top one here of the card. These are the cards that uh, do not come with the game normally, but I think you can purchase them. Whatever this weird Joker-looking character is, named the Baron. Uh, so it doesn't look exactly the same as you will find uh, in the sheet we're looking at, but it has all of the information there, and I know it's too small for you guys to see, so I'm not going to keep that up there. But this is how the character sheets look in Bessem and in Absolute Power. So you got the names, you got the character points, name, origin, occupation, et cetera, et cetera, where he's from. So you have your body and mind, which come together to get your damage multiplier. Look at this Venn diagram he does up here, right? Body and soul, which get your health points. And you have your combat value of 11s across the board. And 70 energy points, which are these two. And your attributes. Remember, attributes, it'll always, th always and forever throw me off. At so I have to just say it in my head. Attributes are your your skills and talents and so forth. Uh, you can see the level that they are and the points at a cost. This weird one down here that we talked about was that force field one. Cost him 16 points for level 4 force field. But uh, blocks incorporeal. Oh. Okay. And it's area of effect. So uh, let me zoom in on this so you guys can see a little bit better. It's weird font in here. So this is the uh, the enhancement is that not only does the force field stop bullets, oh, I get it now. This is the uh, the the four, not the of. It blocks incorporate, so ghosts can't get through. So it is impervious yeah. against ghosts. Against, I think yeah, I would have but, used the word against instead of four, but it's still. Yeah, it's not four. If something is four, something it's usually beneficial. Yeah. Un unless you're saying this bullet is for you, it's probably a threat. But when you're talking <laughs> about a force yet. field, you know, it's it's for, it's helping. But uh, apparently not. not now. So, so, yeah. so we're looking at this here, and we'll get to, into this more when we do uh, uh, character creation, I think, next week. Uh, this one, my, the minus one, reduces it from four to three. And this enhancement here reduces it from three to to two and that's why the total it costs him as if it was four but it's really two because remember he's going wide and not deep on that one so uh 10 point for an item which we will talk about later on items cost points but they have a little bit different rules for them because unlike champions that has these weird terms and i say weird not in a in a bad way but you know just term you know obvious inaccessible focus obvious accessible focus in obvious you know those different terms that just kind of add in there, items have a specific, items and gear have a specific meaning here uh, in, in this game. A little bit more simplified. So, And then he's got his defects over here. So amnesia from car crash. So does that mean he's missing an entire year or just the car crash? I don't know, but I'm not worried about that right now. Well, the thing so, is, the, 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 the way it was written and... Uh, with his uh with his second detriment the whole uh hounding thing i don't i don't think he remembers his entire career in the boy band at all okay so he might that's be right years and three points does not cut it for me You're like no i need more than that mm -hmm. page 25 it says read the sentinel earth setting okay one paragraph and i zoomed in on the wrong thing make youtube be normal again. All right. Zoom in here. If you're looking for a compelling, dramatic, and ready to use modern superhero setting in which to establish your adventures, considering using Absolute Power's canonical Sentinel Earth setting that's presented in detail in book two. We're not going to cover book two. There's also season one and season two, which I think was the reason we had uh, Mark on last time. Uh, talk about that. So it's like Earth, or, it's like Rifts, where, you know, the the world is moving on. It's just moving on much faster than Rifts does. But <laughs> Rifts has only moved nine years, is it? In like 30 years of, of uh, gameplay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have outlined over 100 years. What? What's that? A lot's happened, though, in those nine years. But Yeah, yeah that, that's true. And he covers so many different aspects of the world where Mark is focused on Empire City, right? Uh, we have outlined over 100 years of history for the setting that integrates humanity's development with the emergence of metahumans, aliens, and other dimensions. So this is going to be an alternate Earth history. You're, there are things you are going to recognize and things that went in a different direction. The rich setting details a spectrum of characters, world-shaking events, storylines, and equipment you can fully embrace for your game or drop in as desired. The diversity of story opportunities 
an absolute power setting is unlimited. All right. Collectivism is bad. Move on. Uh, 26. Okay, and these are just, uh, I wanted to show the chart more than anything else, but when you select your power, the power points for your characters, uh, godlike is 300 plus. I want to see where it ended. So godlike is 300 plus. Normal human is 25 to 49. So I thought it was 50. Okay. That's minor power. And you can see it in this nice little chart here. At what power level do you want to run your game? Maybe you want to do a 125 point game. Average power, somewhere in the middle of average power. The average no. of average power. Subhuman power. That right there is your kids on bike type thing. Stranger <laughs> Things type thing. There it is. You want to play that? Bunch of preteens on bikes running around solving crimes like, like a really, really bad version of Scooby-Doo? There it is. All right. Um, character benchmarks. It kind of gives you an idea of uh, how powerful your character should be and even gives some minimum and maximums in here. So let's just, let's use this up. No, let's not use it. Let's do average again. So maximum stat value. So you can't have a body, mind, or soul attribute, sorry, stat that is higher than 12. And that's to, at least to start the game. Uh, see maximum attribute levels. Effectively, you cannot have an attribute. So like, uh, one of his powers, I already forgot what the power like his uh, his force field cannot be higher than six. The effective, effective level. Effective level. Yes, that means after all of the after all of the uh, enhancements you know, what, and limiters, what, what you call going wide abilities. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Correct. So he's at a two right now. He paid for four, but he's at a two right now. So he theoretically could raise that four more times. Uh, min max combat values. Remember that Tran had an eleven. Oh, that, that's right. He was a hundred point character, wasn't he? So that makes sense. He had eleven. So he's in this uh, area. Health points between sixty and one twenty, and uh, damage multiplier between five and nine. And that gets you your starting point. Can you increase beyond that? Well, I don't know for sure, but I think you would be able to through you know growing your character, right? But uh, you, you you play long enough, you're going to get better. So. And then this is just getting into your character in terms of background concepts and details and so forth. Uh, how far do I go? Page 31. Rolling dice. Uh, we will look at all this in greater detail when we talk about main uh, game mechanics, so I'm not going to stress about it right now. But nice, easy chart for you to look at. Pop, pop, pop. Uh, again, I like his layout. I do. And there you go. So if you want to be simplistic about it, just stick with the templates and keep customization to a minimum. You know, it's it's like champions. It can be overwhelming for some folks. And then it gives... Uh, I remember Garth used to have this, you know, 50 background traits of your character, yada, yada. It's very similar to that. So, Okay, that's it. That's all we're going to talk about in, in episode one. I know I went kind of deep. Some of you might be like, oh my God, you went all this deep stuff and didn't explain it. Right. But that is the introduction. I wanted to show what it takes to make a character in the game in a general sense. It's not hard, but there are a lot of things to consider. And when we get into the attributes, you're going to find that uh, I hope you're at least somewhat good at math. I argue that this is easier than champions, especially when champions gets into variable power pools and whatever the heck else that other thing is that half steps and so elemental forth. controls. Yeah. Um, but. It is similar to Champions in, in that regard. Some people don't like games like this. Some people want a framework. And then I would suggest go play Marvel superheroes. Or, you know, as, as, when the game comes out fully, it's in kind of the beta phase right now. You can get a, a PDF of it. A Bears Heroic game, something like that. Or uh, was it Face Ripopedia? Was that what Terminus was based on? You know, some, you know that, that genre, that style, because they're, they're all based on the Face Rip, the Marvel superheroes, that's just a framework. You got a framework for your character and you go. Yes, absolutely nothing wrong with that. You've got Heroes Unlimited, which is somewhere in the middle. It's not quite as in-depth as all the points and scattering everything together, but it does take some time to make the character there. But you... How do I say this? It's not class-based, but it's more class-based than a, a freeform game like this. So, with, with its power. So, there are different options out there. And, uh, you know... I I like what Absolute Power is trying to sell, at least 
for now. We'll see. All right. Um, any comments that you started? I know there's a couple I want to address. Yeah, what if, we got? Uh, oh yeah, the, you you address this one uh, after it came out after I started. Yeah. But I I think it's uh, I think it's worth mentioning again. Yeah. So um, Avengers Satan. Now I don't know if this is for every video ever. He sent me a message. He said on one of your next live streams. So I'm doing it for Friday live stream and for today Sunday. Uh, he said that anybody who donates five dollars or more, which we've got one in there, uh, at least one. In there, uh, he will give a copy, a free copy of his Shadow Chaalt, spelled C H A apostrophe A L T. It's a, uh, it's part of his Chaalt world, his Chaalt uh, setting for the Shadow Dark game. He said he'll give a free PDF out to folks who donate five dollars or more. But work that out with him, not with me, please. Hopefully, you can find him. His name on Twitter is Venger Satanus. I don't know his Twitter handle off the top of my head, but uh, anybody who'd be interested in it probably knows Venger is already anyway. But anyway so there we go all right and then we have the, uh five dollars we were talking about from cpk any powers that crit on rabbit rednecks <laughs> for those who don't know that is a battle lords of the 23rd century reference uh the fought um you pro yes you could make a power in this game that allows you to <laughs> crit on rabbit rednecks uh yeah, that, it's funny. That, that would be a uh that that would be a high power limiter like it, it only <laughs> works on the what are, what are they called? The FOTT, 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 -E, FOTT, 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 -T -T. FOTT. There you go. Yeah, it, this this power only works on FOTT, but when it does, man, it's gonna murder him. It's gonna it's gonna kill him stone dead. Anything else? That is it. Okay, I'm gonna address one that's a little controversial. Okay, he's speaking my language here. So, so I will never support a game I get with it. they them BS. Okay, so. Let, let me let me backtrack here. He's from Kanadistan, and we all know that Kanadistan has an issue right now with uh, with not having free speech. OK, and I'm, I'm trying to stay out of the politics of this, but I have to address it a little bit so that people understand. The concept. Um, I don't do they in the singular at all have an entire blog post on why they in the singular is bad. And Sean from Palladium Books and I disagree on this. Okay, a heathen dog saw a little bit of the discussion behind the scenes last time. Uh, I, now, if you're talking, well, that's not a problem. I just don't want to uh, deal with people that individually identify themselves as they, them, or then take it out. I mean, that, that, that's why I read the manifesto at the beginning. Now, that doesn't mean you have to buy the game. I'm not saying go buy it right now. You, everybody should love the game. If it, the game's not for you, the game's not for you. Just understand that Kanadistan uh, uses uh, Queen's English. Queen's English has been doing they in the singular for a long time. Apparently, we're picking that nonsense up here thanks to you know uh, the year 2016 uh, through 20, uh, where pretty much every style guide except for Chicago and every dictionary decided to add that crap in there because it was not in there beforehand. Anybody who says it was is full of bleep. Uh, but, uh, but he's Canadian. So he's going to write in the Canadian manner. So you I give have it a to pass. understand in in Kanadistan right now, you can lose your job and and or go to jail if you if you misgender someone, if you use the wrong pronoun, if if you use he in the singular, you can actually get arrested for real. There there was there was one year uh since 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 you you brought up the whole Queen's English thing. There there was one year a, a few years ago that uh, 3000 people were were arrested in in England for for uh speech violations for misgendering it happened it i happened. don't know if that happened in canada so exactly if, like that but there is some weirdness yeah yeah there, there there's there's a whole bunch of crap in canada too people have lost their jobs for for misgendering someone you know and that's the way it is so if if you're going to publish something in canada or from canada and you decide not to follow the the Kanadistan, you know, uh, so, social dictates, then you, you could you could lose your company, lose your job, and go to jail. It's possible. So that's it, man. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not mad at him. No, for for not being a martyr. I'm mad at Americans who embrace the stuff, and I'm specifically mad at American yeah, conservatives yeah, who embrace yeah. the stuff because you know Definitely. I get that the Definitely activists that. on the left are going to do it, 
but uh, um, isn't this McCreese's <laughs> Alexander McCreese's superhero setting? If you call that rules light, <laughs> dude, you have to have a physics degree to play the game. <laughs> His autism goes off the charts in that game. I love Alexander McCreese, but uh, yeah, I, I, when I watch videos on Aberrant, that is if it's his. I think the Aberrant is his. Uh, oh, Ascendant. I'm sorry. Okay. He does Ascendant. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the correction, Full Metal Dragon. Let me put that up there. Okay. So I was wrong. So I was wrong. All right. It's Ascendant. New start with an A. So, all right. Uh, okay. So, anyway, long story short, uh, th this is segment one. Let's put up uh, the. Uh, we're gonna go into the game. I respect Mark McKinnon. He's come on our show. He came in. He gave us the what for one point. He's been really cool with us afterwards. I have not reached out to him since the last time that he was on the show. I know he's published a couple of things. Uh, most of that isn't due to any sort of animosity towards him or like. Uh, it's either I got to it late. Or I just have other things going on, but he is more than welcome to reach out to us anytime he wants to promote something. He's been a stand-up guy to us. You know, if Heathen Dog has a differing opinion, he's welcome to give it, but I, I don't think he does. He's been a stand-up guy to us, even if we disagree. He's been really cool, and I think, you know, supporting Mark McKinnon in gaming terms, I know nothing about his politics. Yes, he was a Canadian politician, so maybe if we dug into his politics, but I don't do that. I don't dig into people's politics, and he doesn't kick me in the teeth with it. So I, I, li I like him. I think he's a good guy.